ASL interpretation and closed captioning are available during the entirety of this event. Our event team will spotlight the interpreters. To view transcript, please press CC Live transcription at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Do not hesitate to ask for support, either by sending a message to myself or Frank Smith, or by unmuting yourself. Thank you. Down to you, Chloe. Thank you, Adela. Apologies. My name is Chloe, and I'm from an RCMD. I am a white red settler. This alternately generous that I benefit from research and researches generated and disseminated by First Nations Mindy and Indian versions. Indigenous Sajibu versions as well as the different peoples. I'm correctly result on the tradition of territory of the Ottoman terrain and Nishinabe, Ottoman and Lunenbiwak peoples. So the territory of the Akankuin people will, will forever be my own and where I first learned from indigenous community. When I take a walk with my dog on country roads, I spend time with my oldest in the field. I recognize my privilege to witness the beauty that is needed. When I retain knowledge in my own office, I acknowledge the coloniality that prevails in the fields of the lovely studies and sensuality studies where both my community based reasons and talk the reasons are located. As a community based reasons and a talk the students, I am continuously learning about the intersections that exist between disability and indigenity, and ultimately our society further marginalizes these intersections. Through my work, I commit myself to unlearn knowledge embedded in colonialism and recognize the systems of oppressions that remain at the forefront of education. I'm still to improve my own learning of the way that I really benefit from. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Chloe. My name is Mohammed. I uh, pronouns are he/him. I'll be introducing the um, the event 
but also I'll talk about the virtual access for all project. A needs virtual access for all project provides educational support and awareness aimed at students with disabilities transitioning into post-secondary education. Accessibility and accommodation resources are provided through our quarterly state of the school publications, while our regular webinar series addresses topics such as self-advocacy, accessing accommodations at work and school, and transitioning into the workforce. Further financial support is available through the Needs Student Awards Program and Accessibility Resilience Program. Virtual Access for All project is generously supported by the Employment and Social Development Canada's Goal Getter Program and has recently received an upward amendment in response to the positive reception. Uh, and then to, for our event tonight, uh, please uh, join us as my learning coach founder, Deanna Fadelik, walks us through how my learning coach came to be and the ways in which MLC is helping post-secondary students across Canada experience academic success. In this session, my learning coach will also share how they work creatively to remove systemic barriers and increase access to post-secondary education for students with disabilities. Deanna is the founder of My Learning Coach Educational Solutions. My Learning Coach is a collective of educational professionals who have come together to provide a variety of academic coaching services that ensure Canadian post-secondary students have full access to their education. Using a collaborative coaching model, My Learning Coach works with students to remove barriers to learning with the goal of ensuring full access to an equitable education. Deanna draws on her lived experience to relate to students and has designed My Learning Coach to support students who experience barriers to learning. Deanna ha has firsthand experience navigating post-secondary education as a student with learning disabilities and ADHD, which allows her to empathize with many of the challenges students face. She's a first-generation university graduate and successfully navigated graduate school as a single parent while working full-time. Deanna's life experience and career path has brought her full circle as she now finds herself advocating for the rights of post-secondary students. And welcome, Deanna. Thank you. I'm so excited to share with everybody today. Let me just share my screen and get all set up here. Just one second. All right. I'm hoping everyone can see that okay. If not, please let me know. Uh, I'm so excited to be here. I'm very excited to share with everybody about the work that we've been engaged in at My Learning Coach, um, about this wonderful resource that organically came together just a few short years ago and how it's really grown. Um, the impact uh, of the work that we're doing with students is profound. Um, and so I'm, I'm really excited to, to be able to share this with everybody. Um, I plan just to speak to you and to tell you the story. Um, and at the end, we'll have an opportunity for questions. So if anyone has any questions, uh, please hold them till the end. If it's really urgent, hey, totally let me know somehow, quick raise your hand or interrupt. That's totally fine as well. I understand sometimes uh, the benefit of being able to um, ask the question uh, in the moment. But I definitely will leave some time at the end to, to share with everybody. And I'm always happy to uh, connect with people afterwards as well um, to share more information. So tonight, my plan is just to tell you the story about how my learning coach came to be. Um, my learning coach actually started out as a small passion project um, formed out of my own lived experience and frustration with accessing support for myself um, and for the students that I've worked with throughout my career. 
My learning coach really formed kind of as an accident. Um, it started as me just wanting to support learners. Um, it started as a favor for me to uh, work with some students attending a university um, the year before the pandemic. Um, there was a couple students that needed some support and I stepped up to, to provide that for them. And it became, it became a love. It became a love for watching students grow, uh, for watching them become confident. Um, it, it broke my heart to see so many students struggle to navigate the many systemic barriers preventing them from having full access to their education and to demonstrate their learning um, throughout their program. So that's really where it started. Um, let me start by sharing a little bit of information about myself. So as the wonderful introduction, my name is Deanna Fidelic and I am the founder of My Learning Coach. I wholeheartedly, from every bone in my body, believe that access to education is a fundamental human right. Um, I have lived experience. Um, I experienced many barriers in my life and in my work. Um, as mentioned, I have a learning disability in reading and math. Um, it's very impactful in my life. I also have ADHD, which is also very impactful in many ways. And at times in my life, I've definitely struggled with my mental health as well. So I feel like I've kind of lived a lot of what a lot of our learners go through differently, and I've experienced it differently as we all do. I will admit, yes, I procrastinate all the time. Um, I use assistive technology to support me in my work. I have many strategies that I have developed over the years and other supports that have helped me with my work. In fact, one of our coaches with my learning coach, one of our coaches, and coordinators, Evan, she actually guided me through creating this presentation um, that I'm sharing with you today because, yes, I was procrastinating. Um, not that I didn't want to do it because I very much want to share the information, but sometimes task initiation can be a bit of a challenge um, that I experience and I know a lot of our post-secondary learners um, experience as well. So a little bit about my, my educational background and my professional background so far. I have a Bachelor of Education degree in special education from the University of Alberta. I am the first person in my entire family to go to post-secondary. And I'm the per first person in my entire family to graduate university. Um, and I'm pretty confident that my son, who's now 14, will be the next person in my family. So I never grew up um, with family members or those close to me um, going to post-secondary, it wasn't really a conversation in my house. It wasn't really something that I grew up with experience. So when I entered my Bachelor of Education degree, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know how to enter. I didn't think I was smart enough. Um, and in fact, my high school grades actually weren't that good. Um, and I, I wasn't able to enter university through the traditional entrance requirements. Um, at that point, I also didn't know that I had a learning disability or ADHD as that diagnosis came later in life when I started um, in this work. Taught for a few years after having my Bachelor of Education degree, and then I uh, went back uh, for my graduate degree in educational psychology at the University of Alberta. I earned this degree while working as a full-time teacher and as a single parent, and it was so hard. Um, the disability-related barriers that I experienced didn't make this work any easier for me. Um, the thing is, I didn't know, for one, that I had a disability. I also didn't know about accommodations or resources that were available to me. And, and I'll remind you, I was a special education teacher. I feel like I should have known this information, but I wasn't aware. I was not aware um, what I had access to me. Um, in, in my grad studies or my undergraduate degree. So I, I spent most of my career uh, thus far working in the K-12 system as an educator and a school administrator. Um, in the K-12 system, um, resources are scarce. Teachers and school administrators uh, working in the K-12 system have very little access to resources, especially financial resources. Um, and so through these roles, I had to learn to think outside the box and I had to learn to be very creative with the resources that were available to us at the school so we could support students. Um, my career then led me to work full-time in post-secondary education. 
where I currently work as a faculty member at a university in the field of accessibility. So in my work, I am engaged in research, I teach, and you know, I really just ensure that learning is accessible for students. Um, through my work in post-secondary, the barriers that I see now for learners are very similar barriers that I see in the K-12 system. And let me tell you, I am stubborn and I'm determined. And so I really was like, we gotta do better. We have to do better for our students. And so I sought out creative ways to ensure that students are able to access the support that they need to experience success in post-secondary. Um, I realized that unlike in the K-12 system, financial supports to access additional resources were in, available to a lot of post-secondary students. But this, these supports were very difficult to access. So I decided to fix this. And then my learning coach became a thing. My learning coach was born um, out of that determination to, to ensure that we could have access for all of our learners. Now, this work started because I noticed barriers everywhere. Barriers were everywhere in my work. Um, so let's talk about these barriers. A barrier is, is a barrier to learning is anything that prevents a learner from being fully engaged in the learning process. So there's many different types of barriers that prevent students from fully participating and accessing and demonstrating their learning. And I think it's important that we're aware of potential barriers to this access. So let's take a look at some of the many barriers that I saw students commonly experience. And a lot of these barriers I still see students commonly experience. Okay, so there are so, so, so many of them. Um, I would say one of the main barriers is that there's a lack of awareness of supports and services available. So much like me in my undergraduate degree and my grad school, I didn't know what supports or services were available to me. I didn't know I had a learning disability. I just knew that learning was really hard for me. I just knew that I had to work harder than some of my, my peers. Um, I just knew that my grades weren't quite as good. Um, as some of my peers. Um, many students aren't aware of the institutional supports available to them. So I think things are getting better in that sense, um, but a lot of students still are not aware of what areas of the institution can help them with, with certain things. Um, students are not aware that there's federal and provincial disability grant funding that's available to them to support their students. So when I spoke about a moment ago about there being financial support available, this is what I'm talking about. There are fun There's funding available for students to um, ensure that their learning is accessible to them. The problem, however, is navigating these systems to access support um, is also very, very difficult. So accessing this funding, if you're aware of it, awesome but you still have to be able to access the student aid and the grant funding in order to get the support. Um, navigating systems with, you know, even applying to post-secondary, uh, navigating uh, enrolling in courses, knowing what to pick, how to figure that out. Um, there's a lot of kind of different steps that are involved in navigating these systems. There's lots of deadlines and application requirements that can be quite tricky for, for students to access. Um, one of the big barriers that I notice for students is that the accessibility offices, the service departments that are there to support students are in themselves oftentimes barriers. Very important service and if students can navigate it, um, they can get some really wonderful support. But the process to register with accessibility services can be quite confusing. Oftentimes in order to register, students have to have verification of disability in order to schedule that appointment. Um, there could be long wait times to get an appointment. Um, so there's a whole bunch of areas that can be tricky for students to navigate there. Um, a lot of institutions require that students have verification of disability in order to access support from them. In order to ac access the federal and provincial disability grants, students have to have verification of disability. I'm sure all of us are very much aware of the um, health crisis in our country and that it can be really difficult for students to, um, to, to, to meet with a medical professional to obtain that documentation. So there's a shortage of medical professionals. Um, there's long wait lists for assessments. Some students don't even have a doctor to go to. Um, there's the barrier to getting a, a required diagnosis. Um, and then there's also some financial costs to these assessments as well. Um, 
lots of barriers, right? I'm going to keep going because there's many. <laughs> so a lot of the supports available on campus, if you are aware of them, a lot of them are inaccessible. So there's, um, we really love universal supports. I love universal supports and universities. And I love that our post-secondary institutions are having some supports available for students. But just because a university has, you know, a tutoring center or, or um, academic advisors or accessibility advisors doesn't mean that that's the best fit for students. Um, sometimes the delivery model can be a barrier um, where they're kind of operating on um, an appointment kind of system where there can be a long wait list to get an appointment or maybe you're only eligible for 20 minutes every couple of weeks or so and that just might not be enough for students. Um, private support can be an option for students, but again, there's barriers for students to find a service provider with appropriate credentials and experience that will allow them to access federal and provincial disability grant funding, um, ap applying for the funding as a thing. And then there's a really long wait time, oftentimes for these grant applications to be processed and finances are, you see, there's tons of barriers. Um, and so all of this became so frustrating to me and I found I was kind of spiraling in frustration all the time. I was thrilled that there was a light kind of at the tunnel for, for access because we didn't have that in the K-12 system. I didn't have a chunk of funding available that I could access to get a specific student support, not easily anyways, um, and not often. So when I saw that there was a funding model, and by this I'm meaning the federal and provincial disability grant funding for students, I was like, we've got to find a way to make this happen for students. So. I try my best to be solution focused. I mean, it's simply draining to complain about a problem, barriers, um, without offering a solution. Um, and so I always like to follow up whenever I'm, you know, complaining about something or criticizing something. I always like to follow up with a solution. And so my learning coach became that. It became my mission to create a solution to the many systemic barriers that were preventing students from fully accessing and participating in their learning. Um, and that really is what we became. So let me tell you some ways that my learning coach works to mitigate these barriers. I feel like I'm just speaking at you, which is not my typical style. So if anyone has any questions, please just kind of jump in and, and let us know. Um, so my learning coach is here to um, offer solutions. We're not here just to criticize. That's not going to get anybody anywhere. We're here to offer solutions for students so that students can have the most successful post-secondary experience possible. Um, I'm often saying to people, my way of contributing to making this world a better place is to help people get access to education because I truly believe that education is life. Education is so, so, so important. And I really want students to have that full access. So at My Learning Coach, our mission is to ensure post-secondary students have full access to an equitable education, not subpar access, not partial access, full access to an equitable education, full stop. That's what we're here for. Everything that we do, every decision that we make is in the spirit of accessibility. Um, we are offering some very innovative and creative solutions to the many barriers present for students. Um, I'm really trying to create, or not me, our team is really trying to create my learning coach um, to, to be kind of a one-stop shop for, for students. Um, I, I've been using the expression lately that my learning coach is kind of like a ship. Um, that we're building while we're sailing it. Um, because we've developed My Learning Coach in response to student need. Um, and so we're constantly looking for ways that we can best mitigate barriers, preventing access for students. So we talked about the barriers. I'm sorry if I was being a bit of a downer. Let's talk about the solutions. So this is what we are doing presently right now at My Learning Coach to um, increase access to education. Um, Evan, I mentioned her earlier. Evan is one of our coaches and she's one of our coordinators as well. We sat down um, last week and we were like, let's lay out um, some of our solutions to the barriers. And so here's some of our solutions. Obviously, I could go on forever about what we're doing to support learners. We really aim to share information and resources with students, with families, with educators, with psychologists, 
really anyone that's going to listen to us. That's what we're doing. We're really wanting to educate and share resources, not necessarily resources on my learning coach, because let me be clear, I already have a job, <laughs> but I really want to share resources on what students have in, in, in order to access their, their education. So we, we engage in presentations, much like this one. Um, we also have presented on other topics, you know, things like the duty to accommodate legislation, overall supports and access options for post-secondary students. Um, we, we connect with high schools and we share information for their grade 12 students about the transition. So we're involved a lot of sharing and resources. Um, we are slowly learning to navigate social media. We have an Instagram account that's growing. It's at mylearningcoach.ca. Please give us a follow because we're sharing a lot of information on there as well. We, uh, probably the core of our work beyond the coaching, which I'll talk about in a little bit, is supporting students to navigate these systems. These are the barriers. We're being honest about the barriers and we, my learning coach is walking students through the barriers. Okay, so there are so many systems students need to navigate. It can be super overwhelming for students with disabilities, for any student, but for students with disabilities, this is an exceptional barrier. For students that are first-generation learners or first-generation university students like I was, it's another barrier um, that they might need some support in order to access. That's what we're here for. We support students to register in university and courses, to pick, to help determine what institution is the right fit for them, what program is the right fit for them. That stuff's hard. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, we support students to register with accessibility service offices. That's a lot of our work, is, is getting students connected with the appropriate, the appropriate resources at their post-secondary institution. That shouldn't be as much of a challenge as it is. In order to support students to navigate those systems, we're working really hard to develop solid relationships with the universities. Um, we have a lot of them already established. Um, it just organically kind of happened, or maybe through, through some of our, our work in, in the communities for which we live. But um, we're really working hard to help students navigate that by partnering and making connections with the accessibility offices at post-secondary institutions. A lot of our work is supporting students to apply to Alberta Student Aid to access this disability grant funding. And there is a whole other section of barriers around accessing that disability grant funding, let me tell you. <laughs> and we'll talk about how we're creatively working on that in a moment. Um, but we support students to access the federal and disability grant funding. We help them with the applications. We help them um, put in the, the, the request through their accessibility office for, for anything, uh, special services and equipment that they might need. Um, for all of our services, we don't charge students. I know that sounds too good to be true, but I'm telling you, we don't take money from students for our services until they can access the grant. And if they can't access the grant, we've been supporting them anyways, because that is the spirit of the work. So obviously, we have to pay our coaches. We have to keep our website up and running. We have to keep the, the work moving. But we work really creatively to offer flexible payment options to remove the financial barriers for students. So um, the main one is offering delayed payments. We support students to apply for the grant. They can access the service now, because that's when they need it not in three months when they get their grant process, they need the support now in their current courses. And students then just pay us when they get their funding um, from the government. This is the spirit of the work. We have karma funds set aside for students um, that are not able to access the grant funding or if there's additional barriers or unforeseen things coming up there. We have third party funders, uh, which is so exciting. Um, and most recently, we're looking to offer a scholarship opportunity with needs in the future. So we're really excited to hopefully roll that out for September. My brain is always going. The team's brain is always moving. We're always trying to find ways to make this happen for students. Um, I wonder if I forgot anything. The innovative support, I think, is key um, in terms of our solutions. Okay, so those are our solutions. Some of them, there's more. I guarantee you forgot some. But that's just our solutions to the proposed, to the barriers that we're seeing. Let me tell you about our team. Our team is fantastic. 
Um, who is our team? <laughs> no, it's not just me. <laughs> uh, when my learning coach started, it was me. It was my face on this website um, because originally it was me just helping out a few students. Um, and then very quickly, more students were being referred to us. Their friends were telling, you know, tell them about the support. And then so I started calling my friends who were educators that I've worked with throughout my career to be like, oh my goodness, I'm trying to help out these students at this university. It actually was Concordia University in Edmonton. Um, can, can you help me out? It just started as this really authentic, organic thing where students were reaching out. We now have a really large team of professionals. I meant to count um, before I came today, um, but I, I actually never got around to it. Um, I think we're at like 50 to 60 um, coaches that we have on the team. We have psychologists who have joined on the team. Um, all of our professionals um, believe in this work wholeheartedly. They believe in this work and they're, they've dedicated themselves much like I have to supporting students and to seeing students be uh, successful. So we're a collective. We're a collective of educational professionals who have come together to, office this, to offer this service designed to increase access to post-secondary. We are not a tutoring company. We are a collective of professionals who have come together. That's the spirit of the work. Um, all of our professionals on the team have really high academic credentials. Most of our coaches are educators themselves, um, working in high school, junior high classrooms, post-secondary classrooms with graduate degrees or higher across various areas. We're wanting to make sure we have people on the team with a, raw, a variety of background and skills and experience so that any learner that comes to us, we will have somebody there for them. We have university professors, we have researchers, we have educators, we have PhD students, we have higher educational professionals. We have counselors, we have psychologists, um, I think we have, an, we have an occupational therapist, um, and we aim for a diverse team of professionals. So like I said, we can support, support everybody. Um, learning coaches are doing the academic coaching with students and some of the other kind of uh, services that we'll talk about. Accessibility coordinators are making the magic happen behind the scenes, helping students apply for funding, coordinating with the post-secondary institutions, um, counselors and psychologists completing, uh, providing counseling and therapy for our students, which is needed, um, and also providing um, educational psychological assessments and mood assessments and ADHD assessments so that students can have verification of disability so that they can access everything available to them. Um, all of our learners are passionate, oh, sorry, all of our, our team members, our professionals are all passionate about learning. Um, and we're all expert learners ourselves who wholeheartedly believe in um, accessible education. So feel free to check out on our website. Um, we've got our team members and probably a little bit behind. I'm getting people up on there. I know I am. Um, check out our Instagram. We're always introducing our, our coaches on there as well. So now let's talk about our services. This is kind of the meat and potatoes. I've given you the spirit. I've given you the why and the how. Let's talk about what we actually um, we do with students. And so, like I said before, we design all of our, our services with the student in mind. Um, it was only a couple of weeks ago that I received a phone call from one of the, one of the universities, uh, the accessibility office, and they said, hey, Deanna, we have a student who needs this type of support. Do you guys do it? I said, well, we didn't yesterday, but we do now. So let's make it happen for them. Let's talk about that. Let's get creative. Let's make it happen for them. If a student needs a specific support, we are doing our best to make sure that we can design and we can provide it for that student. Um, all of our services are, are, are here to empower and support students to reach their full academic um, aspirations and potential. Here's an overview of our service, our services. Um, Academic coaching is the main service. It's kind of the umbrella term. Um, we call it academic coaching because coaching is the model, the delivery model that we find to be most successful for learners. Academic coaching is a blend of traditional academic strategy support uh, and a little bit of tutoring kind of sprinkled in the mix there, um, delivered using a coaching model. Um, we partner our students up one-on-one -on -one with a coach, and that coach becomes their person. That's their person that guides them through their studies from beginning to end um, and is really meeting the student where they're at using their current course material. So I always say my learning coach services are not meant to be um, something you could just 
Google search like mm, how to study or how to take notes. You can Google search that. Um, we're here to do it with you using students' current course content. And so that's been really, really, really important. Um, so academic coaching is a blend again of the academic strategy instruction and tutoring. If a student requires support with assistive technology, yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to support them, um, knowing what type of assistive technology can support them. So that's the consultation and then the, the training piece. Um, we support students with academic and accessibility advising. So um, oftentimes, um, I don't want to focus back on the barriers, but oftentimes there is barriers with students trying to reach out to their post-secondary institution um, to know um, what courses to enroll in. Um, and so we, we support students that way. We also are supporting students to kind of advocate for appropriate accommodations and support at their post-secondary institution as well. Uh, Note-taking support, um, that's one of our newer supports that we're offering for students. And so uh, note-taking um, is something that has been really well received. Um, educational psychological assessments, this is paramount. This is pivotal to the work. As a K-12 educator, I could not get my students assessed. I will say it's not all about me, friends, but I will say the reason why I struggled through junior high, high school, post-secondary was because I didn't know that I had a learning disability or ADHD. Um, I was just always um, the social butterfly or I needed to focus more in class or I needed to do more practice on my multiplication tables or I needed to focus. Like, I didn't know. Um, and I came from a point of, privilege where I was still able to navigate my way through. Not a lot of students can do that. Um, actually, no, a lot of students can do that, but they shouldn't have to do that. And so in order for students to access the support, they need to have assessments. But assessments are really expensive. So my learning coach sponsors the cost of the assessments for students um, so that students can have the assessment they can learn about themselves as a learner, which is most important. Um, and then they can have that assessment in order to access accommodations and supports at the post-secondary institution um, and in order to access the grant funding available to them so that they can have access to their education. So the word of the day, my friends, is access. <laughs> That's the word of my life. Everything always goes back to accessibility. Um, and so we offer educational psychological assessments. Um, I saw one of our, Brittany, I don't know, I didn't tell you I was going to call you out, but I see Brittany in here. Brittany is one of our psychologists that completes assessments for us. So we're very grateful for her. And I, I do believe she's she's in the call. Hi, Brittany. Um, so Brittany is one of our psychologists. And so part of the work that we're doing at My Learning Coach, like Brittany doesn't work for My Learning Coach. Brittany has her own um her own psychology work on the side or her own business. And so we we reach out to Brittany when we have students who need us need assessments. So she's with Onyx Assessments in Sherwood Park, Alberta. So she does assessments and she does assessments for students um, in multiple provinces of the country. So we've made sure that we have enough professionals on the team in terms of psychologists that can do assessments everywhere. Um, so that's been really important for us to make sure that we have somebody available. The beautiful thing about the assessments, Brittany, I'm so sorry. I didn't tell you I was going to call you out like this. Um, That's okay. I hope it's okay. Okay. Yeah. The absolutely. beautiful things about the assessments is like, I'm sure a lot of people are aware in Alberta, particularly if a student needs an assessment, they can get one through Alberta Works, but it takes forever. Nobody has three, four, five, six, seven months in order to get the, the assessment so that they can get the support with their, with their studies right now. And so what we're doing is we are taking a leap of faith. We are um, believing in our learners and we're saying, we're going to sponsor your assessment because you deserve this. And so then what we do is we help the student apply for funding to um, hopefully get reimbursed for the assessment um, so that we can continue operating this model in a pay it forward um, type, of, uh, type of model. So that's for ed psych assessments, uh, ADHD assessments for sure, um, mood assessments, the other missing piece that we noticed was that a lot of students need access to counseling and therapy. Um, that's not something that the grant typically pays for unless you're in Ontario. They're so lucky in Ontario. So my learning coach is forming partnerships with uh, different counselors and therapists um, and psychologists that can provide that service for our students. And so we're just getting really creative and we're really just networking and we're finding other professionals that have um, a love for this work 
and that believe that providing this for students is really important. Um, and so counseling and therapy, recently we're getting requests for ADHD coaching. Um, ADHD coaching for my learning coach is in the lens of, of, of for, for learners. We're, we're not, a, we're not doing ADHD coaching for students that are not for people that are not students, but if they're students, um, we definitely can bridge into the supporting students to manage, um, and use their ADHD in a way that's uh, working for them. Um, and then most recently we're providing some behavioral and social support for students. So that's really exciting too. So this is where we're at right now. All of our work, uh, especially within the academic coaching, we follow a gradual release of responsibility model. So we're hoping to get the students to a point where they, they can feel uh, super confident and independent. Um, but independence looks different for everybody. For me, as I mentioned with this presentation, having somebody to coach me through it was really helpful as well. And so we know that sometimes we need that support to do our best work, and we're happy to do that. Who are our students? Um, we have students enrolled in post-secondary schools all across the country. I'm not kidding you. Every single province. I live in Alberta. This started with Concordia University in Edmonton. <laughs> and within a year, we have been all over the country. So uh, we are in most major universities. Sorry, we're not in the institution. We're virtual. We have students enrolled in most major post-secondary institutions across our country. Um, nobody in the territories yet, but one day. Some of our students are fresh out of high school. Some of our students are mature students. We've got a lot of single parents, a lot of people retraining um, for second careers. Um, our youngest student is 17 and our oldest student is 63. So we have a variety of students. Um, students are typically um, referred to my learning coach through their accessibility office. So we, you know, we've got relationships with accessibility advisors. Um, a lot of our students are word of mouth. So they have a friend who is accessing support from us or their mom heard about it or their teacher heard about it. And so it's all just been this really organic, beautiful um, stream of referrals. Um, and one thing that's important to know is once the students are set up with My Learning Coach, um, it can take a little bit for us to get them to set, set up, but we do that as quick as we can. Um, students are typically eligible to access the grant funding and the support for each and every term that they're enrolled in courses or their programs, if they wish. Some students don't need or want to access support beyond that one semester or two semesters, but we have some students that, um, because it's helpful for them and it makes their learning more accessible, they, they choose to access our support for every term. And the type of support that students access really depends upon the need of the student, the barriers present before them, um, and honestly, the design of the course. How accessible is the course for them? If it's not a very accessible course, um, then uh, students might need some more support. Whereas one term, they might have been enrolled in courses that are really accessible. Okay. So I have some testimonials um, from some of our students. I um, invited one of our students here actually, Brooke. Um, is Brooke's camera on? Brooke's in the call. I can see her with her son there. Brooke, your testimonial is not gonna come up right away, but we're gonna talk about you in a minute, okay? Um, I did give Brooke the heads up and she's cool with, <laughs> with that. Um, so this is one of our students. This is Deanne. Deanne's um, at the Basque University student and Deanne's been working with us for over a year and a half, maybe two years now. Um, Deanne's a mature student. Um, Deanne went through the whole process with us from getting an assessment to determine, you know, and finding out she had a learning disability and she is thriving. Uh, like me, first generation student, a single mom, we've got a lot in common. Um, and, you know, Deanne said to us, I can't say enough great things about my learning coach. They help me love learning again. I have struggled since junior high, and I'm honest, can honestly say that I'm excited to be back in school and loving it. Um, so that's Deanne. This is Heather. Heather's another mature student. Um, and Heather uh, never completed high school, actually. Heather left school, I think, in grade nine or grade 10. So proud of herself. She, she said she almost dropped her class at the beginning of the term because she thought she was too stupid, which broke my heart. Her coach helped her learn to study and prepare for exams. She says, my final grades are in and I received an A in psychology. I did it. And then she said, thank you, my learning coach. We are so proud of Heather. We're proud of all our students, but Heather, um, hearing her story to say, you know, she felt stupid, broke my heart. Um, it's not uncommon for us to hear that. This is Brooke. 
Brooke is in the call right now with her son. This is her, her son, Remy and Brooke. Brooke is the very first, my learning coach student. Here we go. Brooke is the very first student that I ever supported. She attended Concordia University. Um, we would meet on Saturday mornings at a Starbucks and we um, would work together. And I worked with Brooke throughout her whole degree. Brooke is a recent graduate. Congratulations, Brooke, with her Bachelor of Arts degree from Concordia University. Um, and she is, I think, planning to do her Bachelor of Education next year, right? Her after degree in education. And so we're super proud of her. Brooke said, my learning coach offers flexible virtual academic coaching that I can fit into my busy schedule. When I first met Brooke, she was a student athlete. Um, and so managing the demands as a student athlete and school was, was something that we helped work with. Um, and now Brooke's a young mom. And so she's, she's managing, uh, all of those demands of parenthood on top of learning as well, which is, is something a lot of our students are doing. And this is Stephanie and Stephanie, I, I have all mature students. I don't know why it just happened to be, I didn't plan it that way, but Stephanie is also a mature student. Um, she's got two young kids and she returned back to university after 26 years. And she also didn't know she had a learning disability. She had no idea. She just knew that learning was really hard. Um, and so we've been working with her and she's doing wonderful. Um, and she's graduating in the spring. So that's, uh, that's really exciting. Those are our people. Um, so this brings me to the end. I'm, I took a little bit longer than I planned, but I, I like I said, um, I was, I was talking to, um, the folks in the call before we started that I can talk about this stuff forever. Um, we are always looking to connect with other professionals. We're always looking to um, connect with other families and other students that could look for support. Um, we do not advertise our service. Uh, we really want it to be an organic um, service, um, but I also, it's hard to balance because I, I really want students to know what's available for them. So if you know anybody that you think would, would benefit, please do reach out. You can follow us on Instagram uh, or, or Facebook at mylearningcoach.ca. Our website's up there as well, um, mylearningcoach.ca. And you can email us at coordinator at mylearningcoach.ca or just message us directly from the website. And there's a QR code there um, if anybody wants to pull out their phone and scan the, the screen right now. So that is my, my big blurb to everybody. I hope it was really helpful. Um, and I can definitely open it up to, to questions. But Frank, I don't actually know if I can see questions if anyone chat puts them in the chat with my view. We're looking for questions in the chat right now. I'm not seeing any, do anybody, does anybody, we um, have a question for Deanna and Turner, please. Oh, and we can't quite hear you. I don't know if you're. That was a very enjoyable presentation. Can you hear me now? I can, yeah. Okay. But I just wanted to ask you a question. <clears throat> Knowing what I know from my research I did from my life. Um, would you say that maybe you're taking some of the work that should be done by those facility officers and you're perfecting it to the best that it should be? And I'm not trying to say that, I'm just saying I know myself because I was a mature learner and there were services that I did not get that I should have gotten one of the universities that I went to. And because I felt that some of the workers in the facility office were not up to what I would call snuff up to where they should be. And so your service is actually doing a better job for these learners. Yeah, I think that's you a plus, a major plus. Oh, thanks, Anne. Yeah, and, and you know what? I work in one of those accessibility offices in, in a post-secondary institution, and I have to say, we do the best work that we can. And all of my colleagues are wonderful human beings, and we're doing the best that we can. Am I always doing what I think every single one of my students could benefit from? I'm trying, 
but I'm using the resources that I have. And so I always like to believe that every professional in this field is doing the best that they can. It doesn't mean that it's and, and I don't mean that in any slight to any professional. And so sometimes we want universal access. We need universal access. That's so important. Some students need more than that. And that's where my learning coach steps in. Um, and so we're here for students that need more. And that's okay to need more. And, and, and needing more could be for a variety of reasons. And so that's what we're, ste we're stepping in to be.